Presenting a graph or table is kind of like telling a story. Every good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. When you show your audience a graph or a table, the first question they're going to have is, what am I looking at? So this is where you'll begin. Start by explaining the units. If you're presenting a graph, explain the units of the y-axis over the units of the x-axis. For example, this graph represents the number of Apple Music and Spotify subscribers in millions over months. If you're presenting a table, explain what the columns and rows represent. For example, this table shows CEO pay in the years 2013 and 2014 by company size. Now that your audience knows what they're looking at, it's time to explain some of the key information from the graph or table. Key information would include trends, significant changes like big increases or sudden decreases, background information that can explain the reasons behind the data. For example, both Apple and Spotify have steadily added subscribers from 2011 until July 2017 with no major fluctuations. However, their subscriptions have been growing at an even faster rate ever since September 2016. And over here, it would be important to point out that CEO pay in smaller companies actually decreased by almost $1 million, whereas for larger companies, it grew. This might have been because 2014 was a harder year for smaller companies, or because CEO pay was a hot topic among the middle and lower classes in 2014 and it was a lot easier for them to demand changes in smaller companies rather than in big ones. What you don't want to do in the middle section is explain every data point. This is boring and unnecessary. Instead, help the audience understand the key information. So, now that you've helped your audience understand what they're looking at and explained the key information of the graph or table, it's time to wrap up your presentation. There are two common ways to do this, and they both involve talking about the future. Number one, offer predictions. This works well if your presentation is about market conditions. Where do you see the market going? Try to keep the predictions general instead of too specific, as you don't want to be blamed if things don't go the way you said they would. Number two, provide recommendations. What should the company do with the data in your graph or table? Is now the time to increase production, or would it be smarter to invest in innovative new products for later? Again, only provide recommendations that you're confident the data supports. So for example, here you could say that both companies expect subscriptions to continue to rise, as there has not been any significant decrease or stagnation in the last six years. And here, you could say that although CEO pay has risen for large companies, it would be smart to first ensure that your company's earnings are steadily growing before deciding to raise the CEO's salary in the years to come. Now, here's how this sounds all put together. These graphs represent percentage growth in Netflix subscribers over quarters and years. From 2014 to 2017, total growth has declined slightly from 33% to 25% over the past three years. It appears that international growth has slowed the most from 78% to 44% whereas domestic growth is slowly by only 12%. However, the growth rate is still positive in all, mar in all markets, which indicates that Netflix continues to grow every quarter, and in fact, the growth rate saw a slight increase in the second quarter of 2017. In the future, 
We expect that Netflix growth rate will remain positive as there is still a lot of room in the international market to spend. Remember, presenting a graph or table in business is like telling a story. Every good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Help the audience understand what they're looking at, point out the key information, and give them a general view of the future.